everybody, on behalf of Eau Claire Baptist Church, we welcome you today for our online worship. Let me just say before we start today how much I miss each of you, how much I miss our public gatherings together. Uh, while we continue to meet this way virtually, we invite you to stay in touch with us through Facebook. We're also continuing to meet on Wednesday nights for Zoom prayer and fellowship. So uh, we desire to stay connected with you. I want you to know, for those of you that are members of Eau Claire, how much I love you, how much I miss you, and you continue to be in my prayers as we face these days together. This morning, we continue our theme of more good news. We find ourselves again in Psalm 23. Today, our focus is Psalm 23, verse 2. In Psalm 23, the Lord reminds us, David, the writer, reminds us, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. And so today we continue focusing on God's goodness in our lives. And I'm so happy that you're with us today. Whether you're watching with us live now or whether you're watching the recorded version later. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I thank you for walking in the Christian faith with us. We have a hymn that we're going to sing this morning in the garden. The words will be on the screen, so I invite you to join us as we sing together. And then we'll have a prayer time to include the Lord's Prayer. And then we'll follow up with an additional hymn over the message today. So please, right where you are, sing along with us. Let's worship our great God today as He invites us to come into His presence through worship. Welcome, everybody. today, really uh, notes of sympathy to some of our church family. Um, it's been a tough week for a lot of folks, and so let me share with you just uh, quickly a few requests that we want to remember. Um, if we could please remember the family of Conrad and Betty Pearson. Uh, Betty, as some of you may know, lost her son, tragically, her oldest son, in a motorcycle accident. Uh, just right at a week ago. Uh, so we extend sympathy to uh, Betty, to Conrad, and all their family in the loss of her son, Ricky Shannon. I want to let you know the services will be Tuesday. Uh, this will be at Thompson Funeral Home in Lexington. There will be a visitation from 2.30 to 4, and then there will be a service at 4 p.m. So our prayers are with Betty and her family. Also, uh, we do extend sympathy to the family of Dave and Kelly Strom. 
in the loss of uh, Dave's nephew, 19-year-old Jalen, we, um, we want to pray for this family as Jalen passed away unexpect unexpectedly a week ago Friday. Uh, the memori memorial service or funeral service was actually this past Friday in Atlanta. So we want to lift this family in our prayers. And then a uh, former member, Nadine Brazel, some of you may uh, know already, this is uh, from the week prior, but we extend sympathy to Chris and Becca Brazel in the loss of Chris's mom, Miss Nadine. So um, as we pray together, I know you probably had needs as well. Uh, you know, these are very tough days uh, in the life of so many. And so today, as we focus on God's goodness and the Lord uh, giving us rest for our souls, I want you to know uh, that, that I'm praying for you, that I'm praying for our church family. I'm praying that God would give you mental, physical, and emotional rest. And we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. I'm praying that God would give all of us rest for our weary souls. And so as we pray today, uh, I just want to lead us in a time of prayer, and then we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer. So I'll have the words to that on the screen if you need those. So take a moment and bow with me, please, as we pray. And let's just take a moment of silence so that you can lift your prayer to the Lord right where you are. Bow with me as we pray together today. Father, today, part of our worship is coming into your presence. Lord, our worship is acknowledging who you are. Our worship is acknowledging your goodness in our lives. And Father, today, we just bow before you. Uh, we worship you, the creator of heaven and earth. We worship you today, our creator. Lord, we stand in need of your presence. So many today stand in need of physical wellness. Many stand in need of mental wholeness. Many more stand in need of, of emotional health. Lord, today during these days, in, in a time when, uh, when the earth, when all the world has an opportunity to be silent before you, we as your people bow and we humbly ask you for your help. Lord, we pray for the needs of those that we mention, both spoken and unspoken today. And we pray together as you taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, we invite you to sing with us again as we focus on God's goodness today. This hymn reminds us, God will take care of you. I invite you to sing with us, and I appreciate uh, two members of our choir helping us sing today. San uh, Sandy and Amanda, thank you for leading us, and Fred, thank you for playing for us as we worship the Lord together.
God will take care of you. Say it with me today where you are. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Today we continue our theme of God's goodness, more good news. And today our focus is on the fact because God is good, I can rest. Because God is good, we can rest in His perfect goodness for our lives. Psalm 23 is our focus today. Uh, Last week we focused on verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And today, verse 2 is our focus about the Lord making us lie down in green pastures and leading us beside quiet waters. I just want to remind you of what we talked about already. We've said two weeks ago, because God is good, we remember His goodness. Just to remind you, we focused and we said when we forget God's goodness, uh, we fail to acknowledge Him. We fail to ask God. We forget to trust God. And ultimately, we forget to hope in God. And then last week, we focused on Psalm 23, verse 1. Because God is good, we do not have to worry. Can I remind you today, you do not have to worry. That is not required of you. And yet, today, we are reminded, rather than worry, because God is good, we can rest. You know, Psalm 23, verse 2, reminds us of this. When the text says, He makes me lie down. And maybe you've been there. Maybe there's a time in, in your life when you've gone through a physical energy, a physical ailment. Maybe there's a time in your life when you have just run out of emotional energy and you've had to take some time just to relax, recover, and renew yourself. You know, sometimes it is that God places circumstances in our lives like the psalmist says in verse 2, where He makes me lie down. You know, during these days in our lives when so many people are still staying home and so many folks are working at home, it's almost as if God has given us an opportunity. It's almost as if God has given us this opportunity to lie down before Him. You know, the text says that He makes us lie down and uh, David writing in Psalm 23 verse 2 tells us really two important truths of this. He, uh, he makes us lie down in green pastures. This represents rest. I remember being a young boy and watching my grandfather and others take care of cropland and how beautiful the pastures were after their hard labor. And just a beautiful picture of a green, fresh-cut pasture makes you think of rest. Now, maybe not for those who did the hard work, but for others to enjoy the view, it, it reminds us of perfect rest. And then the Bible says He leads us beside quiet waters. This, this is a, a, a picture of refreshment. The still waters that are rolling in our presence remind us of the refreshment of the Lord. Can I ask you today, in your life, do you need physical rest? Do, do you know that studies tell us that, that most Americans are overworked? I would dare say that most are overstressed. What about emotional rest? I mean, has COVID-19 taken its emotional toll or what? I think all of us could use rest from the Lord emotionally speaking. And then there's mental rest. I mean, wow, what a, what a strain. What a mental strain so many are under today. Uh, do you know, I've read articles, you probably have too, that, that talk about the number of diagnoses we will see in the post-COVID world of those that are dealing with some post-traumatic stress syndrome or disorder after all that we have been faced with. Today, Psalm 23 verse 2 reminds us that the Lord wants to give us physical rest, emotional rest, mental rest. 
I love what Rick Warren says about this. He says that, that the Lord smiles when His children rest. Now, my wife and I, we, we have a three-year-old at home, as many of you know, and uh, he goes from about 7 a.m. until about 10 p.m., almost non-stop. I, I thank God for my wife who does all that she does to take care of him and others and our other two children during the day as I try to work, but um, he's a joy, no doubt, and I enjoy playing with him. I enjoy uh, watching him run around the house. But, but there's a great peace that comes at around 10 o'clock at night when he lays down to rest. And, and all of us just kind of smile over him and just take that deep, big breath like, ah, do you know that God smiles over you when you rest? Exodus 31 verse 17 is a, is a powerful model for this. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day He ceased from labor and was refreshed. You know the Lord was modeling for us what He wants us to do. To rest and to relax in His presence. To keep a Sabbath. To work those six days, but on the seventh day that the Lord commanded that to be uh, the Sabbath, which is Saturday, and that, that has not changed in God's law. And, and we also observe the first day of the week, Sunday, is a day of worship in keeping with the New Testament church as well. But the Lord commands that we keep a Sabbath, that we keep a balance uh, of rest in His presence and His goodness. Can I ask you today, are you emotionally exhausted, mentally strained, physically exhausted. By the way, mental and emotional exhaustion will find its way to impact you physically in one way or another. You know, the Lord commands us. Listen to what He says in uh, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Uh, this is in one of the modern translations, but listen to this in a, in a modern translation. Uh, the Lord says, paraphrasing, are you tired? Worn out? Burned out? Listen to his invitation. Come to me. Get away with me and you will recover your life. I will show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the enforced, or I'm sorry, the unforced rhythms of grace. The Lord invites us to rest. You know, my, my heart is heavy this week for someone that, uh, that I've come to know over the past two years, have come to greatly respect, have even come to love as a brother in the working world. And I have watched uh, as, as lack of of rest, what I suspect has taken a toll on on this person and his family. And I, I'm praying for him deeply and, and, and unfortunately have observed some of the impacts of what happens when we don't take time to rest. And I fear that so many are in this place today when, when the Lord in a time in the midst of, of a pandemic that is awful but in the midst of this, when the Lord is, is, is speaking and calling His voice to us to come into His presence, I, I pray that we are listening. God has given us a unique opportunity. He has given the world an entire opportunity right now in the midst of so much worry and stress. He is giving, giving us a unique opportunity to do what He says in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 and Psalm 23, verse 2, to come to Me and I will show you how to take a real rest. So we ask the question, what prevents rest in our lives. I mean, Scripture is so clear. I mean, if the Lord is clear enough to give us a commandment to Sabbath and rest with Him, if the Lord is, is clear to model um, a healthy model of six days working and one day of rest, 
What is it that prevents us from doing this? We, we could all be experts at this. Let's be honest today. We, we could all be experts at what prevents this. But here are a few things that, that I think Scripture teaches us. One thing preventing us from resting as the Lord commands. And I'm not talking about being lazy, by the way. I'm just talking about soul rest. I'm talking about rest in the presence of the Lord. Uh, we, we don't do this because we think I must control this. We, we've talked about this the past two weeks, how, how not remembering God's goodness is often a lack of trusting Him what prevents us from resting oftentimes is we think, I must control this. And this could be emotional control, it could be mental control, it could be economic control, uh, whatever the case may be. I, I read the illustration that Rick Warren tells about going to lunch with a very wealthy man. And over lunch, um, they were talking about the gentleman's finances because evidently the gentleman was expressing some concern about lack of finances and Rick Warren says that he was extremely wealthy. And so Rick Warren, if you, if you know him, he is such a great pastor. Some have said he's America's pastor. So uh, Rick Warren asked him, so sir, how much more do you think you need to be secure? And would you believe the man answered back, oh, just about... 20 or 30 million more. A lot of that is where we are. It is control, whether it's financial control, uh, mental control, emotional control. A lot of times we do not rest because we think, I must control this. You know, the Scripture says in Ecclesiastes 6, verse 7, all of a man's labor is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not satisfied. How much more do you need to be secure, the man? Or Rick Warren asked, the man said, oh, about 20, 30 million more. That, that is about not having a satisfied soul before the Lord. Another translation of Ecclesiastes 6 verse 7 says, we work to feed our appetites, but... Meanwhile, our souls go hungry. Can I ask you today, in the midst of your struggle to rest, how is your soul? How is the standing of, of your soul before our great God today? How is your deep-seated contentment in your life? If you're restless in the depths of your heart and soul, I encourage you today, to trust the Lord and to let your soul be fed in Him. Another reason we are prevented from resting is not only do we say, I must control this, but we also sometimes say, I must have this. This can be known as materialism, wanting more, wanting more things. Proverbs 23 verses 4 and 5 speaks about this. Do not wear yourself out trying to get rich. The writer of Proverbs says when, you're set, when you set your eyes on it, it is gone. Uh, Ecclesiastes 4 verse 4, I have seen that every labor and every skill which is done is the result of rivalry between a man and his neighbor. This too is vanity and striving after the wind. That, that is what we've heard before. Keeping up with the Joneses. And a lot of times we fail to rest because we think I must have this. And then another thing that prevents us from rest is, is that, that phrase, I must do this. I, I've got to do this thing, or I must do this. Our minds never stop, and it's, I must do, do, do this, 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 that, that, that. Which, it's not a bad thing. I, I appreciate that value in people, that drive to, to do more. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but when that drive gets in the way, when we base our worth on our work, like 
Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15 says, Fools are so exhausted by a little work that they can't even find their way home. Life is more than work. And think about life. You know, so much we think about life as what we do. Think about it when you introduce yourself to somebody. The, the first question is often, well, what do you do for a living? When the real question is, well, tell me, who are you? It's not necessarily what we do that is the most important, but it's who we are that, that value is really placed upon in the Lord's eyes. It's who God has created us to be. It is the work that God is doing in and through our lives. And then the last reason that, that we often are prevented from rest is we think, I must be this. And again, motivation is not a bad thing. Luke 12 verse 15 says, Beware and be on your guard against every form of greed, for not even when one has an abundance does his life consist of his possessions. Your life is and should not be defined on how much you think, how much you make, or how much you accumulate, or how much stuff you have. But rather, the opposite is true. What is it that gives us rest in closing? It is saying we cannot control this. It is acknowledging to the Lord, Lord, I do not control this in my life, but You do. It is acknowledging, as we said last week, Lord, You are my shepherd. Lord, You are my shepherd. I shall not want. Today, do you need to acknowledge that you don't control this, but God does? What gives us rest is rather than us wanting, rather, and I'm not just speaking materially here, I'm speaking in the depths of your heart and soul. Sometimes wanting more comes through, uh, comes through coveting. It comes through desiring more than what God provides. And we want, we want, we want. And yet real rest comes when we acknowledge, like Psalm 23 it is the Lord who provides. Real rest comes not when we say, I must do, do, do. But real rest comes when we say, God has already done. God has already done absolutely everything necessary in our lives. And so I invite you today as we focus on Psalm 23 verse 2, as we focus on God's goodness, say it with me, because God is good, I can rest. Physically, emotionally, and mentally. I close again with what the Lord invites us today in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Are you tired? Worn out? Burned out? Come to me. Go away with me, and you will recover your life. I will show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the enforced rhythms of grace. I invite you today to rest in God's goodness in your life. To say with the psalmist, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And let Him make you lie down in green pastures today for rest, and let Him lead you beside still waters today for refreshment. Would you take a moment to reflect on this as we close our time together? Thank you so much for joining with us today.
you and may he give you rest for your weary souls. God bless you today. Thank you for being with us this morning. I love you so much and have a great day. In the Lord.